OK. So one of the kind of threshold that we want to talk about um, that the MCAT will test you on is going to be the, um, sorry, let's write, the difference threshold, which is also called the JND, or the just noticeable difference threshold. So in contrast with the other thresholds that we just talked about, the absolute threshold and the um, threshold for subliminal perception, the difference threshold is between two different stimuli. So this is basically saying you have an original stimulus. What needs to be the difference in the next stimulus for, for you to notice that difference? And if it's too small, then you won't pick that up. So let's think, let's think for example, I'm lifting a five pound weight. And if you exchange that with a 5.001 pound weight, Right, probably not going to notice that difference unless you're crazy, sensory-minded, whatever. But if you gave me an eight-pound weight, then I probably would would be able to pick that up. So, in this in this scenario, uh, for a five-pound weight, the uh, the J and D would be about, I mean, give or take, about a half a pound, where people would be able to pick that up about half of the time. Again, so the difference threshold is also related to noticing the difference 50% of the time. So similar to what we did with the, with the absolute threshold. And um, so the point I want to make here is with the JND, it will increase as your initial stimulus increases. So for an eight pound weight, uh, sorry, for, for a, let's say an 80 pound weight. So the initial stimulus is 80 pounds in this case. If you gave me an 80.5 pound weight, I would not notice that difference, at least not half the time. And so if you show, if you show that in a graph, you'd have the uh, delta i, which is the j and d, and then i, which is the original stimulus on the x-axis here. And so as the original stimulus increases, your J and D is also going to increase with that. And if you have a very small initial stimulus, then that's where our uh, sensory systems are most sensitive, and you will, have, you will need a smaller difference in the next stimulus to be able to perceive the difference there. OK, so let's look at, it. Let's look at another example here, maybe a little more difficult math. So let's think if we, if we heard a sound coming in at 300 hertz. Okay. If we hear another sound at 300.1, you know, probably won't pick that up at least again half, at least not half the time. So let's say the difference, the JND at this at this threshold, or sorry, at this stimulus, is two hertz. Okay. Um, and we want to find what the the constant is. And this is where we introduce Weber's law. So Weber's law states that there's a constant ratio between the, the difference threshold and the, and the original stimulus. So written out, that looks like, oops, sorry. so we got Weber's law, which has the difference threshold over the original stimulus is going to equal k, which is the Weber's constant. Okay, so if we want to find the Weber's constant for, for this sound that just came in, and because using that, then we can find the different thresholds for other sounds. So the J and D being 2 hertz, so using our equation here, so we got 2 hertz, and the original stimulus was 300 hertz is going to equal k, which is going to be 2 over 3 is 0.67. We got two zeros here. This is going to be 0 0.0067. Or this, you can also write this as a percentage. So this is going to be a 0.67% change. So this is the constant here that we're going to be, that, we're, that we can then relate to any other sound. So now let's look at a, a sound that comes in at 800 hertz, OK? So now that we know what the Weber's constant is, now we can find, OK, what's the just noticeable difference? What other sound needs to come in at what intensity 
for us to detect that 50% of the time. So um, let's write it up here. So now we're looking for the delta i. So we got delta i is the value that we're looking for over the original stimulus, which is 800 hertz, and equal to, uh, let me write this out as, put this in scientific notation. Just, all, all, just a quick side note here. For the MCAT, to keep things simple and numbers simple, try to keep things in scientific notation as, as much as possible. It will make your life millions of times easier. So I'm going to write this as, uh, you can put 0 0.67 times 10 to the negative 2. And this could also be written as right, 2 thirds times 10 to the negative 2. OK. So it's just simple rearrangement of this equation here. I'll give you guys just a second to do that. And I'll work it out as you guys do that here. OK. Did you guys get what I got there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sweet. So again, I just, I just put this 0 0.0067 in scientific notation. So 0 0.67 times 10 to the negative 2. Or this is just 2 thirds times 10 to the negative 2. And then we just do cross multiplication here. So 800 times 2 is 1,600. Divided by 3 is it going to be about 533, give or take. Um, actually, 533.33. And then just bring that decimal place two, two places back. And then we got 5.33 hertz. So a sound uh, original stimulus at this intensity is going to have to have a, a next stimulus either below or above um, 5.33 difference. So 805.33 hertz. If another stimulus came in at that intensity, then you would pick that up at least half the time. 